Hi everybody and welcome. This is Mike Werner and today we're going to be talking about cost volume profit analysis. Sometimes it's called break-even analysis if you're trying to make do the calculations just to break even. As its name implies, cost volume profit analysis is a technique that examines the relationships between uh, cost, volume, and the effect of those relationships on profit. In this video, we'll examine how managers use cost volume profit analysis to predict sales levels that are required to either break even or to earn a target profit. And that target profit could be expressed as a dollar amount or it could be expressed as a percentage of sales. And we'll do the calculation to demonstrate both of them. Another thing that we use cost volume profit analysis is what if analysis or sometimes called sensitivity analysis. So as we're doing the calculation, a lot of times we'll discover that the company is not going to be able to uh, earn the profit that we uh, desire uh, without making some changes. And so cost volume profit analysis is a, is a great technique to handle a situation like that because we can make changes in our calculations to see what the impact will be on the required sales. We can change the price, we can change our variable costs, we can change fixed cost, we can make changes to all of these things and then redo the calculations very easily to come up with the sales required to earn a target level of income. So CVP is a useful tool it's good for startup businesses, and I'm convinced that if managers and business owners, potential business owners, used cost volume profit analysis before they even open the doors, before they even spend the first dollar on their business, at least some of the times they would decide not to invest, not to start the business. And then other times they would at least know what they're, what they're getting into and what it's going to take to earn that target profit that they desire. So whether this is uh, something that you want to do just for your own business or you want to do it for uh, a division of the company that you're working for, cost volume profit analysis is a very powerful tool to help you examine a current business as you know that's in operation and try to come up with ways that you can make improvements or it can be used to help you determine whether or not you should enter a business venture and then if you are going to enter it it will help you tweak the numbers so that you're most successful okay so here's the example we're going to use as we go through the calculation it's for a small company very small company that sells t-shirts beachside t-shirt shop and I use t-shirts because everybody's familiar with t-shirts and you know we can visualize the company they have unit sales of 3,000 units. Their sales are $36,000. Their variable cost is $27,000, resulting in a contribution margin of $9,000. Less fixed cost of $12,000 provides an operating income of three, oh, excuse me, an operating loss of $3,000. Now notice this income statement is in the contribution format. And the contribution format differs from what you learned about in financial accounting because instead of taking sales minus cost of goods sold to get operating income, then subtracting our operating expenses to get operating income, what happens here is we take sales less variable cost. So we're subtracting the variable cost, grouping that all the variable costs together, to come up with a number called the contribution margin and the contribution margin contributes so to speak towards fixed cost and operating income in this case there's an operating loss but anyway what i've done is added up all the variable cost and they total twenty seven thousand dollars i added up all the fixed costs such as rent and, and insurance and, and advertising and such and it totals twelve thousand dollars and i just put together in a statement um, in the contribution format. 
Notice I've left uh, columns here for per unit amounts and percent of sales. These columns turn out to be pretty important for our calculations. So let me go ahead and fill those in. In order to fill them in, I'm going to need to calculate the per unit selling price. To do that is quite simple. I'm just going to take the $36,000 total sales and divide it by the number of units, which is 3,000. And that gives me, what is it, $12 per unit. And then for the variable cost, I take the 27000 divided by 3000 And that gives me $9. $9 per unit. And then finally, I'm going to take to get the per unit contribution margin. I'll take the $9,000 divided by the 3,000 units that we've sold, and I get uh, $3 per unit, $3 per unit. So let me go ahead and fill those amounts in. Uh, $12. Then we've got the $9. That would be subtracted to arrive at the $3. And, and I guess I could have... I could have just subtracted the $9 from the $12 to determine the $3 if I wanted to do that. We've got to fill in these, these percentages now. So how I'm going to calculate those, pretty easy. It's a percent of sales in sales of $36,000 divided by sales of $36,000. Well, obviously, that's 100%. So sales are 100% of themselves, obviously. Uh, for the variable cost, I'm going to take the $27,000 in total variable cost, divide it by total sales of $36,000, and that renders a variable cost ratio of 75%. And so next, I'm going to do the uh, contribution margin, which is, uh, let's see, 9000 divided by the 36,000 and that gives me 25%. So there we go. Now another way I could calculate the variable cost ratio and uh, the contribution margin ratio is by using per unit amounts now that I've got them. And, and sometimes quite frankly all you have is per unit amounts. The total amounts are not provided. Other times, you don't have any amount how to use the total estimated amounts or total actual amounts. So let's go ahead and take the $9 for variable cost, $9 divided by the selling price of $12. And that gives us a, a variable cost percentage of 75% or what we might call a variable cost ratio. And then for the contribution margin ratio or contribution margin percentage, we would take the $3 divided by the $12 selling price. And that, that gives us 25%. So we have a contribution margin percentage, sometimes called a contribution margin ratio of 25%. A contribution margin ratio is actually a technical term in management accounting. So let's go ahead and fill these amounts in. 100%, 75%, and then finally, the one of the stars of the show here, the contribution margin ratio is 25%. We could have just subtracted to get the answer, but uh, we went ahead and, and uh, calculated it. So you've got a number of ways to do the calculation. I think it's uh, important for you to know how to do this because if you're going to do cost, volume, profit analysis, you'll need to know how to come up with per unit amounts and uh, perhaps these ratios. Okay, so now let's take a look at the formulas we're going to be using as we do the cost, volume, profit calculations. The first one we're going to use is a formula to determine the sales in dollars that are required to achieve a target profit. And here it is. 
Very simple. We're going to take total fixed cost plus the target profit, whatever the profit is that we desire, and we're going to divide it by the contribution margin ratio or the contribution margin percentage. It's the it's the 25% uh, that we calculated just a moment ago. If we want to get sales in units, we can use the second formula. So to get sales in units uh, that are required to earn a target profit, we'll again take fixed cost plus target profit. And this time, we'll divide it by the contribution margin per unit. Contribution margin per unit. And that will give us the, the uh, unit sales required to earn that target profit. Now, if we want to break even, we can use these formulas, same formulas, but instead of entering a target profit amount, just enter zero for the target profit. And that way, you'll be calculating break even. Another formula we'll be using just a little bit is this third one where it determines the uh, sales in dollars that are required to achieve a target profit expressed as a percentage of sales. So let's say that our target profit is 10% of sales. What we're going to do is just take the total fixed cost and divide it by the contribution margin ratio minus the target profit percentage. So if we want a, a, a profit of 10% of sales, we just take the uh, total fixed cost and divide it by the contribution margin ratio that we calculated, which is 25% minus the 10% uh, target profit percentage. Now, we'll just be using these three formulas. This is it. Um, many Many uh, textbooks have multiple formulas. They've got so many formulas and so many equations uh, that they're showing in these chapters. Uh, and what's happening there is they will use a couple of different ways of doing the calculation. They'll have an equation technique starting off with equations. They'll have what's, what's called the contribution approach, which is more like what we're doing here. And then they will also have a series of calculations and formulas and the equation technique to do break even. And once they're through with that, then they'll do the calculations again to determine what the sales should be to earn a target profit. So what we're doing in, in this video is we're focusing on these three formulas that will pretty much solve any of the problems we run into in this area. Uh, but We've only got three of them instead of the six or eight or 12 that are included in many cost management accounting textbooks. So the question is, how much must our sales be in dollars to eliminate that $3,000 loss or just to break even? And as I said earlier, most folks would say to eliminate a $3,000 loss, just increase your sales by $3,000, but that's not going to work. So instead, we go ahead and use one of our formulas, <clears throat> uh, total fixed cost plus our target income of zero because we're breaking even, divided by the contribution margin ratio that we calculated, gives us required sales in dollars of $48,000. Now, we can get the sales in units very simply by taking the $48,000 and divide it by the selling price of $12. And that would give us, what is that, 4,000 4, units. 4,000 units. Let me neaten that up a little bit. So we see that this formula can provide us with the sales in dollars and then with a little extra work, we can also get the sales in units. So it's a very handy uh, formula. If we want to use a formula to get the number of units directly, uh, we can use the second formula, formula number two, where we're going to take the $12,000 in fixed cost plus the target profit of zero and divide by the unit contribution margin, which is $3. So when we divide 
we arrive at 4,000 t-shirts uh, that we need to sell to break even. With this formula, we can also determine sales in dollars pretty easy. Take the 4,000 units times the $12 uh, selling price, and that gives us the $48,000. Or done a little bit more neatly, here we go, 4,000 times the $12 gives us $48,000. Now, I know that you're trying to learn something about this and you want to be efficient in your life. And some of you are saying, aha, the formulas, I've only got to really know one of them because with either of the formulas, I can get both answers. And that is true. But I highly recommend that you do not focus on just one of the formulas or the other. And let me tell you why. Number one, they're so easy to learn. You know, it just takes an extra couple of minutes to learn both of them. Number two, if you settle on the per unit amounts, sometimes the, the company sells multiple products and per unit amounts become pretty useless. They become very useless or totally unavailable. So you would have to use percentages. So then some of you might say, well, then I'm just going to focus on the percentages. Well, you could do that. You could do that. But in some cases, the per unit amounts are so nicely rounded, you know, to in this case, $3, that uh, to use them is very easy. And yet to use percentages, if the percentages come out crazy, you know, so instead of it, the percentage coming out to 75%, it comes out to 75.12345%, then it, it makes using that percentage a bit more cumbersome. So I would recommend that you learn both of the formulas. Now, if you're using this video to get through an accounting class, I would definitely learn both of them because your professor may, on the exam, come up with questions that you just have to use one of the one of the formulas or the other so in order to break even earn a target profit of zero we've got to uh, sell forty eight thousand dollars worth of product that's four thousand units times twelve dollars forty eight thousand minus our variable cost and you can check this by taking forty eight thousand times seventy five percent it'll give you thirty six thousand or four thousand times nine it'll give you the thirty six thousand then you can subtract to get the 12,000. You can get it other ways as well. Minus the $12,000 in fixed cost, we end up with a break even. But what if we're not satisfied with breaking even? Seldom are we satisfied with breaking even. We want a profit. And let's say that the profit we desire is say $27,000. So we want a profit here of $27,000, $27,000. How much do we have to sell to earn $27,000? Now, using the formulas that you've already seen, you can calculate the sales necessary to earn that profit. So you can stop the video now and go ahead and calculate it if you like. So here's the calculation to determine the sales required to earn a target profit, the desired operating income of $27,000. What happens here is we take our fixed cost, total fixed cost, plus the $27,000 in target profit, we add them together, we divide by the contribution margin ratio of 0.25, and it renders a result of $156,000. Uh, just like before, we could take the 156000 divide it by the $12 per unit to get the sales in units, or we can use the second formula, formula two, and take our fixed cost plus our target income of $27,000, divide by our per unit contribution margin of $3, and we get 13,000 t-shirts. We got to sell 13,000 t-shirts to earn that $27,000. Once we have the 13,000, we could multiply it by $12 per unit 
to work back to the 156,000. So this, these, these formulas are very easy to do, as you can see, and there are multiple ways to come up with the answer. Hey, let's check our answer to make sure it's right. Here's our new condensed contribution approach income statement. You see 13,000 units. Sales are 13,000 times 12, 12 or 156,000. Variable cost, 13,000 times 9, 117,000. You can also get this result by multiplying 156,000 by 75%. And then the contribution margin is going to be the 156,000 times 25%, or you can subtract, or you can get it by taking 13,000 times $3. Any way you want to slice it, you're, you're able to get back to this $39,000 contribution margin, less our fixed cost of 12,000 gives us a profit of $27,000. So what do you think of the profit of $27,000? Is it a lot of money? Is it a lot? Well, to most of us, it's uh, quite a bit. I mean, you can buy a you know, pretty good used car for that. You can pay for half of a really nice uh, new car with that amount. Um, but is it a lot relative to the size of this company? Well, look at this. Look at this. Look at the numbers. I would say it's, it's quite a bit. It's a hefty amount. And we would have to sell a lot more than what we originally sold in our t-shirt shop. So... This uh, $27,000, I, I just picked a number that I liked uh, to do the example, but there is a way that we can perhaps pick a more reasonable number, one that's better scaled to the size of the business. And how we might do that is to establish a target profit that is a percentage of sales, you know, say 10% of sales. Instead of in this, look at this profit. Boy, it's really high. It's higher than 10% of sales, isn't it? Oh my God. So anyway, let's say that we we look at this and say, well, maybe that's a little overreaching. Let's uh, come up with a profit based on you know 10% of sales or 5% of sales or whatever you think is appropriate. So let's take a look at the sales required to earn a target profit expressed as a percentage of sales. We use the third formula to do this and it's very simple. It's a total fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio minus the target profit percentage. So it's the $12,000 in fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio of 25% minus the target profit of 10% and that gives us $80,000 in sales. Uh, for units, we can take the 80,000, divide by 12, 6,667 units rounded. So let's check this and make sure that it comes out to the 10% of, of sales. I've gone ahead and prepared uh, a new updated contribution income statement. And really, it would be a good idea if, if you prepared one as well, you know, so that you can get some practice at doing this. They're very simple. It takes just a minute to do. Uh, I went ahead and took the $80,000 times 75% to get the $60,000 and then uh, subtracted to get $20,000 and then subtracted the $12,000 in fixed cost to get $8,000. And sure enough, the uh, operating income does equal 10% of sales, as you can readily see. The next thing I'd like to show you is a cost volume profit graph. Another way of calculating the break-even point and, and sales required to earn uh, profit and so forth is to uh, prepare a cost volume profit graph. Now, this looks pretty complicated, but really it's not that complicated. What you do is you begin by uh, entering a sales line. Now, the sales line is in green, the green one. So the green line indicates sales. And so what we do is, uh, for, for this situation, at zero sales, we've got zero dollars. 
And then way out here at 14,000 14, units in sales, we can say, okay, 14,000 units, 14,000 units, a plus, uh, excuse me, times the sales dollars of uh, $12, $12 per unit gives us, let me get my calculator out here, let's see here, 14,000, 14,000 multiplied by $12, that gives us 168,000, huge number, 168,000. So, so we would go ahead and, and, and plot this line uh, so that at this end, it, we, we would, oh yeah, it's right here. So at 14,000, 14,000 would be about right there, right there, right there. And that's uh, 14,000, and that would be uh, 168,000 dollars. So 14 to, to prepare the chart, all I would do is take the, you know, zero sales here. Zero, z zero sales in units would give us zero sales in dollars. And then uh, go way out here to a high number of uh, units, 14,000. Calculate 14,000 times $12 per unit. $12 is our selling price. Would give us a total sale amount of 168,000. So there it is. It's right there, right about there, is 168,000, and uh, and put a dot there, and then I would draw a line that just connects these two positions from here down to here. Draw one straight line for the revenue. For the cost, what you've got to do is start at 12,000. So you got to start right here at about 12,000. You indicate this is at our $12,000 starting point, and uh, then say at 14,000 units, the variable cost, the variable cost would equal the 14,000 times $12. So how much is that? 14,000 times 12. Oh no, excuse me. 14,000 times nine dollars times nine so 14,000 times nine and that will give us 126,000 126,000 so this is 14 times nine dollars sorry about that mess right 126,000 plus the fixed cost of 12,000 126,000 plus 12,000 would give us uh, 138,000. So at this end of the chart, we go out here to 138,000 at 14,000, which is just about right there, right about there. You know, right about there is where it would be if we were doing this visually. This is uh, the... Uh, 138,000, oops, 138,000, and then we draw a line from the this point back to the 12,000 at, at, at zero activity, and you'll notice these two lines will cross in uh, this area down here, down here, this area. Let's color it in red because this is the loss area. We're going to have anything down in this area is going to be a loss. And where the lines cross, where the lines cross, we've got our break even point. And then up in this area, up in this area, we have profit. So if we we're going to color this in, we'd probably color it in, in this profit area, green. So this would be the amount of profit that we would earn um, for any of these activities. Okay, you'll notice that the break-even is right here at 4,000 units, just like we calculated. 
and then if you uh, looked at the profit uh, for 80 sales of 80,000 let's see excuse me of 6,667 ah, right about in here and go up here you'd see that the profit the difference between these two lines would be right about eight thousand dollars you see so this is another way of doing the calculations I, I prefer the formulas myself but you know a, a chart like this is something that you know you may have to learn how to do for for a, a university course or something that you may want to prepare for a, a presentation when you do this obviously it's best to use Microsoft Excel and it will help you prepare a nice looking chart so you see again on on this chart we've got the the uh, sales line in green the cost line the total cost line in uh, red uh, you can see where we've got profit anywhere in this area that I've shaded so to speak shaded quote unquote in green and then um, uh, down here we get break even right at the 4,000 units as we anticipated and then we've got uh, this area down here in shaded in red which would be losses that would occur if our sales are less than the 4,000 units so it's a uh, it can be quite uh, quite helpful okay the next thing I want to take a look at is sensitivity analysis or what if analysis I think sensitivity analysis is just a fancy name for what if analysis and with what if analysis we redo the calculation over and over again for different scenarios what if this happens what if that happens and so forth so when we change the facts and figures that we're using uh, we can redo the calculation and then we would of course derive new sales amounts new anticipated sales amounts so you might ask you know what 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 would uh, what do our sales need to be if we raise or lower our selling price per unit or what do our sales need to be if we are able to reduce our variable cost or reduce our fixed cost or reduce both fixed and variable cost so sensitivity analysis or doing the calculation over and over again uh, is going to give us the answer well the calculations that we did were to budget for 2020 for Beachside and let's assume that the 2020 has ended and they have earned a profit of 21,858 so that it earned the 27,000 but at 21,858 they certainly did better than they did in the previous year let's take a look at their actual results and what we see is they sold 11,286 t-shirts they sold them at $12 just uh, the, the price that they anticipated their variable cost ran $9 per t-shirt just as anticipated and their contribution margin per unit uh, yeah almost like magic came out to be exactly the three dollars in reality uh, these amounts especially the variable cost and contribution margin would not come out exactly as planned but in a perfect world which is here on this video they do and uh, we can see the sales are 135 432 uh, variable cost of about 101 uh, contribution margin of 33858 less our fixed cost magically exactly as we budgeted twelve thousand dollars and so we've got the profit of twenty one eight fifty eight now let's assume that the owners of Beachside are concerned about next year concerned about 2021 and uh, a new t-shirt company has moved in just down the street from them very close so Beachside believes that in order to stay competitive you know in that local market they're gonna need to sell the t-shirts at eleven dollars each instead of the twelve dollars so their uh, their selling price is gonna have to be reduced so the question becomes then uh, you know how much how many t-shirts do we need to sell to
to earn that $27,000 profit that we want. Uh, the new contribution margin per unit is going to be $2, which is the new selling price of 11 minus the variable cost of 9 Okay, so $2. And then the new contribution margin ratio is 18.1818, and actually this goes on forever, 181818%. And now you can see why using percentages uh, can can lead to some problems. Uh, probably in this case, we'd be better off using the per unit contribution margin, because it's $2, than this 18%. If we round it to 18%, the answer is not going to be the answer will not be precise. And then if we use this 18.1818%, it becomes a little bit cumbersome, doesn't it? We're going to go ahead and do it, but this does show you that uh, sometimes it's a good idea to be able to use the per unit amounts. Sometimes it's a good idea to use the contribution margin ratio, especially if you have a company that sells multiple products and per unit amounts aren't available. We're forced to use this. Anyway, we're going to use both of them. And let's assume the fixed cost remains constant at $12,000. So let's go ahead and redo the calculation. Why don't you jump in there and redo the calculation yourself? Well, here we go. We've got the $12,000 uh, fixed cost. We've got the $27,000 target profit divided by the 18.1818%, that gives us 214,500 in sales. Those are the required sales to earn the target profit of $27,000. We can use our formula two to derive the number of units necessary to earn the target profit. So here we go, we've got the $12,000 fixed cost, target profit of 27,000 divided by the new contribution margin of $2. So easy. That means we're going to have to sell 19,500 t-shirts. That is a lot of t-shirts, right? That's a huge number. So let's assume that we're a little worried about this and we and the owners of the company go on a rampage looking for ways to reduce cost. One of the things they decide to do is to look at their current variable cost structure to see if there's anything they can do to help out. And they find that uh, the t-shirts, the cost of them was 21,600 divided by the number of units sold or $7.20 per t-shirt. And so the beachside owners contact their t-shirt supplier and try to get a, a reduction in this cost and and they're actually able to do it the other the other costs like you know variable selling expense and variable administrative expense uh, and let's assume we're unable to really impact these amounts but cost per unit there may be something we can do with this if we approach the company from which we're buying the t-shirts Aha, success. We contact the supplier and they're willing to reduce the price of the shirts by $1.20 per shirt. That's, that's quite a sizable amount. Brings the cost of the shirts down to $6. Okay. So what this means, what this means is uh, the new variable cost per t-shirt is going to go from $9, what we had previously, down to seven dollars and eighty cents it's going to be reduced by a dollar twenty per shirt so the new contribution margin is going to be three dollars and twenty cents per t-shirt which is the new selling price that's anticipated of eleven dollars minus the new variable cost of 780 that gives us the three dollars and twenty cents the new contribution margin per unit so the new contribution margin ratio is 29.091%, another crazy percentage. We're going to go ahead and use it, but man, if I was doing this for work, 
I would use the three dollars and twenty cents because it's such an easy number to use uh, compared to this percentage. Percentage will work though, and we're going to use it. So the way I calculated that was to take the three dollars and twenty cents contribution margin, divide it by eleven dollars, the new selling price, and that gives us point two nine oh nine one or twenty nine point oh nine one percent. You might also notice that we do not have total sales figures available to do this calculation. So we've got to use the per unit amounts. So if you ever have to work on a problem like this, whether you're at work or you're taking an exam or doing some homework, just remember you can always use per unit amounts to get the contribution margin ratio. Well, before we do the calculation, Beachside also looks at the space that they're occupying and they realize that they don't need quite all of the space. In fact, they found a business friend that sells bathing suits and they're thinking that if, if they've got a company there in their building in their same shop selling bathing suits, it will bring customers in and not only will they get rent revenue from the rental of part of their store, but they may sell more because people come in to buy a bathing suit, they may buy a t-shirt also. So remember their, their uh, fixed cost is $12,000, $12,000 for their total fixed cost, including rent. And they, they talk to the uh, company, the folks at the company that uh, sell the bathing suits, and the bathing suit company is willing to pay $250 per month in rent to Beachside. Now, I've got to be a little careful here because this is a monthly number, and all the, all the calculations we've been doing are annual numbers. So what we've got to do is take the $250 a month, and figure out how much we will save a annually. It turns out it's $3,000, which is $250 per month times the 12 months gives us a total cost reduction of $3,000. So we're going to be able to offset our rent, which is part of our fixed cost, by this $3,000. Quite a significant savings. So our annual fixed cost will decrease from $12,000 down to 9,000. We see that calculation here. 12,000 minus the $3,000 uh, savings because we're renting out part of the store provides a new fixed cost figure of $9,000. So with that in mind, uh, the question is, how many units do we need to sell to earn our $27,000 target profit? Recapping all the numbers, uh, I've got it written out here. You know, the new selling price is $11. The new variable cost per unit is $780. Subtracting, we arrive at the $3.20, which is the new contribution margin per unit. The fixed cost is being reduced to $9,000. So, so I noted that. And also our target operating income is $27,000. So here we go. At $9,000 new fixed cost plus our $27,000 target income and our new contribution margin ratio of 29.091, we need sales in dollars of $123,750. $9,000 in fixed cost plus my target profit of $27,000 divide by $3.20, which is our contribution margin per unit, gives me sales required of 11,250 t-shirts. So the next thing we need to do is to check our results to make sure that they are correct. And here they are. I went ahead and prepared this contribution approach income statement. You know, cost volume profit analysis is very popular. In some countries like China, it's one of the most popular management accounting techniques. However, there are certain assumptions we've got to make when we're using this technique. 
because it is really based on estimates and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at those uh, the assumptions that we've got to bear in mind as we're using cost, volume, profit analysis. First of all, the, there's an assumption that all costs can be classified as either fixed or variable. You know this is not really true. You cannot possibly classify all cost as fixed or variable, but you can give it a good try. So if you give it a good try and you get close, you're probably going to be good enough. Okay. So um, the assumption is that all costs can be classified as fixed or variable, but you know we just do our best. Secondly, there's an assumption that fixed costs remain constant throughout the t entire range of activity we're dealing with. In other words, we're working within the relevant range. The same with variable cost. Variable cost per unit remains constant throughout the range of activity we're dealing with. In other words, we stay within the relevant range. And then the selling price per unit throughout the range of activity, it also stays constant. So that's another assumption. We're not changing our selling price as activity changes. And then lastly, if we're doing this calculation for a company that's selling multiple products, now in our example, it's this t-shirt company, all they sell is one product, t-shirts. But you've got to admit that it's unrealistic really to come up with a company that sells just one product. Even a hot dog stand, a business as small as a hot dog stand, sells more than one product. They're selling, they're selling the hot dogs. They're selling, oh my God, they're selling the coffee. You know, they're selling the coffee. They're selling, they're selling soft drinks. They've got the Mountain Dew and every other soft drink that you can imagine. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're selling multiple products. And uh, it, it's no problem, though. It's no problem. If you do run into the uh, situation where the company is selling multiple products, you can handle it totally based on what you've learned today in this video. And I say that because what you can do is just use the contribution margin ratio. Use the percentages. You will not have the per unit amounts. But with that, you're going to get all the answers that you need. Okay. So if we have a company that's selling multiple products, there is an assumption that the contribution margin ratio remains constant throughout the entire range of activity. In other words, the product mix does not change. This technique is valuable for both large companies and small companies, both entrepreneurs and big multinationals. With that, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, this is Mike Werner from Miami saying bye for now.